Thank you, Ayako. And I hate to cut the conversation short just as we're getting ramped up, but it's time for Community Spotlight. As the world of ecotourism begins to show up on the radar, more and more travel service providers are looking for ways to make their businesses conform to the new standards. But what are those standards and what can I do as a traveler to find the most eco-friendly destinations, facilities, and services? That's where Sustainable Travel International comes into view. Through a program of education and training and certification program, STI is clearing the air and helping guide the industry. We paid a visit to White Salmon, Washington, where STI is headquartered, and Julie Sanchez has our Community Spotlight Report. River Gorge and I am here today with CEO Brian Wallace of Sustainable Travel. Thank you for inviting us. It's great to be here. Thank you. Please tell me a little bit about Sustainable Travel and how this came to be. Yeah, Sustainable Travel International is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our focus is on helping businesses, consumers, and destinations protect the unique attributes of their sense of place. Um, supporting environmental conservation, cultural heritage preservation, and localized economic development. We got started back in September of 2002 because we recognized there was a need to introduce the concepts of sustainability within the mainstream travel and tourism industry. Myself and the co-founder both have a background in the for-profit sector of the travel and tourism industry as tour operators. So it was relatively easy for us to identify the need and be able to respond to the growing demand. It is estimated that as many as 924 million people are now traveling internationally each year, a figure that is expected to grow to 1.5 billion by the year 2020. With so many people on so many journeys, the idea of traveling responsibly has never been more relevant. This type of travel is often referred to as sustainable travel, and is quickly moving into the mainstream. Terms like ecotourism, responsible travel, sustainable tourism virtually mean the same thing. A level of tourism activity that can be maintained over the long term because it results in a net benefit to the local communities where it takes place, to shareholders involved in the companies providing the services, and in terms of a reduced environmental impact. We work with a variety of companies in all sectors from airlines and cruise lines to accommodations and, and tour operators providing a variety of different solutions. Um, anything from sustainability planning and the implementation of management frameworks to helping them with corporate responsibility and in creating travel philanthropy programs so that their patrons can or their clients can give back to the destinations that they're visiting. We work a lot with uh, carbon management, um, environmental reporting, really the A to Z from sustainability are the types of solutions that we provide to businesses based on their corporate goals and objectives. Most of my time I spend on the computer. I manage the membership program um, and most of it is emails and developing program materials for the members, educational materials for them. Um, and then, you know, they often just send me individual questions or information, so I have to update their profiles or send out um, information to the rest of our staff about how we're going to promote a certain member or something like that. But the, I'd say 80% of our members are tour operators. We have some destination management organizations, we have some nonprofits that we collaborate with, and then random sort of other members from the travel trade, travel writers, travel agents. We get requests all the time from uh, the media and travelers who are interested in having a positive impact when they travel. And uh, there's a variety of different suggestions that we give them, but first and foremost, it's 
do your homework, find the responsible travel providers, whether they be uh, eco lodges or tour operators specializing in community-based tourism or agritourism. Look at those options and evaluate what's the best fit for you and or your family and your traveling companions. Um, and then look at how can you maximize your positive impact by giving back to the destinations that you visit um, by making a donation to local nonprofit initiatives or um, reducing your carbon footprint by providing donations to reforestation or energy efficiency, renewable energy projects that are local to the areas that you're visiting so that you can pack with a purpose and bring maybe perhaps a really appropriate uh, donation during your, your travels that can not only enhance your experience during your travels, but might enhance uh, the experience with those people that you meet along the way. I also understand that you have a STEP program. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what your company does with businesses to get them certified? Sustainable Travel International offers a sustainable tourism eco-certification program. We refer, refer to it by its acronym, STEP because it really is a step-by-step -step program. It's designed not only as a certification initiative, in other words, a third party seal of approval to avoid greenwashing and um, ensure that companies are doing what they say that they're doing, but it's also um, designed as an educational tool and a measurement management framework. Essentially, companies that use our self-assessment tool are not only preparing themselves to be certified, but also have the information and resources they need to incrementally increase their level of sustainability over time. Our Sustainable Tourism Eco Certification Program and other uh, Sustainable Tourism Eco Labels I think are beneficial to consumers because more and more consumers are aligning their purchasing decisions with their values, but they're confused about which products and services actually are engaging in the types of things that they're advertising and promoting about themselves. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that there's first, second, and third party certification programs and it's important for consumers to be able to know the basic differences between which are which. First party certification simply means that you filled out an application, nobody's verified it, somebody sends you an eco-label. Not very credible. Second party certification means whoever created the standard has done a cursory verification or an in-depth verification of the extent to which you're engaging in those behaviors a bit more credible. The most credible is third-party certification, which means the standard setter has paired you up with an independent third-party assessor or auditor who's absolutely independent of their organization who's gone out and undertaken that verification. Our STEP program qualifies under an eco-assessment level as a second-party certification program because we undertake a desk audit and as a third-party certification program for those businesses that want to become eco-certified. Then what tips could you give um, the public when they're traveling to make a better impact on their places that they're visiting? We get a lot of requests for travel tips, um, responsible travel tips in particular. The suggestions that we provide revolve around preparing your home so that uh, you're not wasting any excess energy while you're away. Um, and on your trip, doing all the planning in advance to determine what your options are as a traveler. Is there a green accommodation? Or is there a tour operator in the region that specializes in community-based tourism and, and that kind of thing? We are more and more actively promoting the concept of waste-free travel and letting people know how you can do it. It sounds like an unachievable concept, but if you bring a water bottle with you and if you're thoughtful about the purchases that, that you make during your travels, even if you're self-catering, then it's likely that you can travel plastic-free. Um, for example, a lot of destinations don't have recycling infrastructure, so if you're purchasing consumables, and there's a need to dispose of them, then the likelihood of them being recycled is slim to none. So it's best to just be thoughtful about what you purchase on the front end and um, not purchase any items that can't be recycled or reused locally. The plastics industry is a multi-billion dollar industry and it requires recycling, but yet we have the technology for soy-based and other natural, biodegradable, consumable products that 
I think if consumers make a concerted effort to demand those products and services, that we'll see an increase in their availability. Because if the people lead, the corporations will follow. Brian, I want to thank you for having us here and also for educating the industry and making our vacations more sustainable. Thank you, Julie, very much for the opportunity. I'm Julie Sanchez, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.